When you see insects, how do you feel? I sometimes feel grateful for them, and other times I just hate the way they get in our food. Are you one of the people who thinks insects are disgusting? We want to teach you more about some common insects. It's important to appreciate and assist the insects in our ecosystem. When you know more, you'll be less confused. One reason insects are important is pollination. Plants need flowers so insects can transfer the pollen from flower to flower. The burdock plant is a crown-shaped flower, so when the insect lands, it has to push its head down into the petals, getting pollen on its head and legs. The black-eyed Susan is a landing pad, so the insect can land and walk on the flower, getting pollen on its legs. What's amazing is that because insects and flowers work together, humans and other animals get to eat foods such as fruits. Next, let's look at some features of insects. These features make insects unique. Many different insects have different life cycles. There are two major types of life cycle, simple and incomplete. Let's compare them. The simple or incomplete life cycle of a two-striped Mermaria grasshopper includes three stages. One, egg, two, nymph, and three, adult. The nymph looks like an adult, however, it's much smaller. Isn't it interesting to know that the nymph will shed its skeleton ten times in the two months it takes to become an adult? The life cycle of the flotillary butterfly is different from the two-striped mermaria because the life cycle has four stages, egg, larvae, pupil, and dot. This means the insect goes through a complete metamorphosis. It changes its body from a caterpillar to one butterfly with orange and black wings. Isn't it interesting to know that the female adult lays their eggs on the underside of a leaf? All insects have a head, thorax, abdomen, and six jointed legs. Many insects share the same ecosystem because each kind of insect has different physical adaptations. Let's look at legs for example. All insects have femurs and tibias, however they are different for each insect. For example, the northern bluet has hairs on its hind legs and are helpful for grasping, hooking, walking, and climbing. They are also used to capture prey in the air while flying. The hermit beetle has spikes and hairs on its legs, but mostly on the tibias and tarsals. It uses this body part to climb up trees, which is where its natural habitat is. Insect adaptations develop over time. Different generations adapt to different plants and habitats. Insects are very picky. They only use certain plants for food and shelter. All animals get energy from plants. They can also get energy by eating animals that consume plants. Insects help pass energy from plants to animals. Animals that can't eat plants can consume insects for energy. This is why insects are vital to a healthy ecosystem. Many animals depend on insects for food. If we lose insects, then the ecosystem may collapse. Native plants have been here for a long time. They live in harmony with other species. On the other hand, invasive plants were introduced more recently. They have a negative impact on the local ecology. Insects need native plants because they only digest the chemicals in plants to which they have adapted. Humans use over 95% of the natural land in America. We have filled it with cities, suburbs, and farms. If we fill our backyards with native plants, we can return habitat to insects. Also, we can return habitat to the species that eat insects. We can return biodiversity. Biodiversity makes our ecosystems thrive. As you can see, insects need native plants, not invasive plants. Native plants help insects survive during their life cycle. Another challenge insects face is climate change. 
Climate change is a large problem in the world because water is rising due to ice caps melting. Climate change is when CO2 levels in the atmosphere increase, which changes global or regional patterns. Climate change is caused by the greenhouse effect, which is when greenhouse gases like CO2 block the sun's heat from escaping Earth. In conclusion, climate change is hurting our delicate ecosystems of insects and making it difficult for them to survive. Insects that rely on certain plants are the insects that may have more difficulties in a changing climate. For instance, if it gets too cold, then the northern bluette nymphs will die off, meaning they will now grow up into an adult. If the northern bluettes don't grow into adults, that means that they cannot reproduce. If the northern bluettes cannot reproduce, that means they will go extinct. On the contrary, an herbivore such as the luna moth may survive just fine because it can change to eating different leaves from trees that thrive in the new climate. We know that during any shift, up or down, the insect populations in any region will change and impact all species in that ecosystem. One thing we can do to help is slow down the rate of change so all species in an area have a lot more time to adapt and find a new balance. Humans cannot live if we are the only species on Earth. We need other species like insects because they help create the ecosystem. Humans need the ecosystem that insects help create to survive. Fortunately, the extinction process takes a long while. If we start sharing our landscapes with other species like insects, we could save as much of the ecosystem that still exists. Here are three ways that you can help insects in your own backyard. First, don't rake up all the leaves in the fall. Leave them for the insects. Insects can use the fallen leaves for shelter and food during the winter. Next, use beneficial insects for pest control. Avoid using any pesticides. They are deadly to many species. Overall, you should try to reduce your negative impact on your yard and environment as much as possible.